about you or listen, you are going to teach nothing. So this is very important. That's good. Okay, just look at the slide. Saves time. That's good. And just a snapshot. We are making a planning for the lesson to save time. Good. Saves effort. Your effort as a teacher. Some teachers are trying to teach English from the first minute to the last minute without giving any chance for the students to take part or participate. So your effort will be managed and you have another period. So to save your effort as a teacher, you have to make a lesson plan. Build self-confidence. The teacher who has a good lesson plan, he is confident of himself. But if you don't have, and the supervisor is coming to you, you are in trouble. So if you have a lesson plan, you don't care about anyone. You just care about yourself. You have a, a confidence in yourself because you know well what you are going to do. That's good. Achieve objectives. You know the objectives of each lesson. So at the end you ask yourself, have I achieved the objectives? But not by using this question, by using the feedback from the students. You ask them any quiz, any puzzle, any activity, just to make sure that all the objectives are covered in your lesson. Develops skills. Okay? So you are a good teacher of speaking English, but you are not good at listening. So next time you can improve yourself. From the listening plan, you can stand on all the mistakes that you can make inside the classroom. But if you have a listening plan, you can improve yourself in the future and your performance will be better and better. Okay? So all these things about the lesson plan. Why are we making a lesson plan for all these reasons? Do you agree with me? So you have to put on your mind these things. So don't get into your classroom without any preparation. Okay? You will waste your time. You will do a lot of efforts. And this is very important. And the last one is how to eliminate errors or mistakes that may you do. For example, in one of the class, you pronounced any word incorrectly. But next time when you look at it up in the dictionary, you find it's incorrect. So you have to uh, try to make it better and better and try to look it again and again in your dictionary. So listen and planning gives you this chance to improve yourself and to avoid mistakes and errors. So a listen plan helps you to do what? Decide what and how to teach. Yes, by using different strategies. How can I teach vocabulary? How can I teach a new grammar rules? So if you have a good lesson plan, it's going to give you the chance to follow them. But if you don't have any lesson plan, so you are going to think many, many times about which strategy will be the proper one. And you are going to waste your time. But if you have a certain strategy about how to teach this point, so you are going to save your time. Okay? The next point about why we are using lesson plan. Anticipate problems and think of solutions. It's very important. Maybe a lot of challenges. We don't say problems, we can say challenges inside the classroom. For example, three or four of the students are very active. They are hyperactive. They are talking all the time. It's a challenge for you as a teacher. So how can you cover this problem? How can you control these students inside your classroom? 
Otherwise, there are a lot of students who are sitting at the back and they are laughing, they are lagging, they are talking, and they are lazy and they are not clever. So how can you solve this problem? By using a lesson plan, you can participate by using this. Okay? So you have to think about every problem may face you during your presentation in the classroom. It's not only about knowledge. No. Maybe you are a good teacher. You have a great knowledge. But you don't know how to convey it. You don't know how to teach it. So you are not a good teacher. The good teacher, 50-50. 50 for the knowledge and 50 for how to teach the knowledge. How to tell the students to use the knowledge. Because the English is a communicative language. We use the language to speak. It's not a target. It's not a destination for English. It's a method. It's a way of talking to each other and understand each other. So this is important. At the end, the students should use the language in their daily life. Okay? We are not just teaching grammar for grammar or vocabulary for vocabulary. No. We are using all these things to use it for the language to speak to each other. So if you succeed in doing this, you are a good teacher. Gain confidence and give students confidence in the teacher. Both of you, the students and the teachers, feel confident about themselves by using the lessons the time. You know each single movement you are doing inside the classroom. Why? Because you are following a lesson plan. But if you don't have one, you are going to go sometimes left, sometimes right, sometimes up, sometimes down, and you are going to vanish and waste your time without any good result. So confidence is very important for you as a teacher. I know you are a good teacher, you listen to English, you use English, but what about give the chance for the students to use English too? So by using the lesson plan, you are going to make two mutual confidence between you and the students. Revise it. If the students don't know how to make it or don't know to differentiate between what is called a regular and regular verse, this is a problem for you in primary five. You cannot continue. So, before you go to the next lesson, make sure that all the objects have many extra activities at the end of the lesson. By asking them, who can make any sentence in a present continuous tense, for example? Who can tell me the past tense of the verb? So what I would like you to do to activate this kind of teaching aids, it's very useful. As we said before, and Mr. Atif said, it's not important to cover all the syllabus from the cover to the cover. Now, what I care about is to use the language. Using the language is very important. I don't care about the whole content of the syllabus. What I care about is using the language. Okay? Teaching strategies. We have talked about teaching aids, about the objectives. What about the strategies? Teaching strategies are very easy word. Don't make it complicated. What we mean by strategy, the way we use, or the teachers use, to present the new material. This is what we call my strategy. And when you listen first at this word, you feel that you are in a big problem. Strategy. We are not in a war. We are in a classroom. So strategy means the method or the way you use inside your classroom. We have many different strategies, okay? So strategy means the way or the method. Samples of teaching strategies. We have many different strategies here. If you look at these six circles. We have the brainstorming. This is one of the strategies. Brainstorming. 
we have cooperative learning, cooperative learning, we have problem solving, role play, we have teaching songs, and we have discussion. All these strategies are used to teach the language. Which one I should use? There is no answer for this question. The answer for this question is related to the nature of your lesson. Some activities need discussions. Some activities need role play. Some activities need the uh, brainstorming, for example. So you have to be aware of all these strategies and which one you use it depends. Okay? So this is the strategies we have to use them inside our classroom. Do you follow me? Are you still awake or you are sleepy? Hmm? Okay. What is a review? Review. Do you remember? We have review on the board. Review is a very simple word. It means a review connects. Connects. The current lesson or the actual lesson with preview, it looks like a warm up. To connect the previous lesson with the actual or the uh, yes. Good reviewers, good review, sorry, are not teacher dominated, you know. I'm not going to dominate the review. This review is not for me, it's for the learners. So who is going to make the review? The learners, the students. Because I would like them to connect. What can you see in the QC? So this kind of review is refreshing the student's mind and connect between the previous and the current or the actual lesson. So it's very important. Think about this. words in your mind, they are deactivated. You don't use them. So when you try to speak English, use many words, many adjectives, many verbs. When you give an example for your students in the school, you just use two verbs. Drink, eat, go, come. I go to school. I eat bananas. I speak English. I listen. What about the other verbs? We have many different verbs in our curriculum. Why don't you use them? Because I know that the students just know these words only. No, you have to activate vocabulary. Most, most of the vocabulary should be used. Checks their previous knowledge. So when you make a warm-up, what are you doing? You are checking the previous lessons. As we said before, there is a connection between the previous lessons and the current lessons. Yes. Yes? It means feedback. Feedback at the end of the lessons. The feedback is at the end of the lessons. But check the previous of the knowledge, it means that I prefer them to connect them with the current lessons. Because there is a connection. So you have to make this warm up for this reason. And also we have Get the students involved in the lessons. I'm not going to talk all the But if you just read the whole conversation by yourself, what else? Yes, please. Maybe, maybe I would write uh, a good chance of the board or uh, getting the missing uh, lesson or uh, choose and uh, get the students. Uh, as I mentioned before, the new material. The attention of the students should be focused on the new material. The learner has to be alert. 
Alert means warned. Alert. Watching and waiting for whatever coming. Okay? So attention, this is the first step when you start presenting any material. Try to make sure about your student's attention. The next step is what can the teacher do to get and keep the student's attention? Yes, this is a very important step when I present something. But how can I keep the attention of my students? How can I do this? Do you have any idea how can I keep their attention? Yes, the intonation of my voice. Don't use just one level of the sound. As we said earlier, English is about music, it's not only about grammar or words. Yes, what else? The intonation of my voice rising. Dark. على فكرة معظم اللي اتعمل هنا اتعمل هنا موجود في تيتشر سلايد بالظبط تمام بس هو في متسع من الوقت شوي Maybe you can make a match exercise between the words, the letters, and the pictures. So this is maybe later, just to put them together here. This is one of the techniques. Very good. واحد من من الطرق اللي أنا بستخدمها أحط الرسمة هنا وأحط الكلمة هنا. تمام؟ بقول repeat after me. Fish. فهو ممكن يكون العلي شايف في حاجتين. شايف the meaning من خلال the pictures وشايف الكلمة من خلال الحروف. وممكن هنا بالطريقة دي أعمل عملية ريفيجن لمين؟ لللترز. اه فيش اف اي اس اتش مثلا. وعندي حاجة تانية اسمها السلو ليرنرز اللي هم بيبقوا قاعدين من ورا دول اللي مش عارفين يمشوا معايا. دول ممكن يشتركوا معايا في انهم يعملوا سبيلنج على الأقل. على الأقل يعملوا سبيلنج. فلو منهم واحد اتحرك ولا اتنين وعملوا ايه فيش؟ اه دي اف اي حلو شغلته معايا. يبقى كله جيت انفولد. كله شغال معايا. أنا ممكن أشغل كل الأولاد اللي معايا مهما كانت مستواهم اللي يقول رسمة اللي يقول الكلمة اللي يقول حرف اللي يقول أي حاجة المهم يبقى إيه يشتغل معايا مرة على مرة يبدأ إيه يتنشط ويبقى أكتف معايا very good طيب شوف The first unit today at at the campsite at the campsite. What's the meaning of the campsite? It's a, a new word. Campsite means a place some friends gather in it, on it and making some activities like playing football. Drawing means in Arabic al muakkar At the campsite in Arabic, fi al muakkar Sorry, I said in Arabic. So imagine the situation. <laughs> okay? I will tell you a small story. A small story. Okay? Listen to me carefully. Then we will discuss on it. Ali is a boy. Ali is a boy. He likes playing and drawing with his friends. He likes playing and draw playing and drawing with his friends. One day he he almost time loves with him, with them. With them, sorry. He exchanged jokes and laughing and love. One day his school organized championship in playing football. He won the championship. He won the championship. His school gifted 
him a mobile phone. Gifted him a mobile phone. He left his friends and become alone playing, playing, playing with his phone. It's a bad or something bad or good? Something bad or good? Something bad. He become alone. He left his friends. So we we should don't play with our phone mobiles at all time. Get our our friends some piece of our time playing with them. Don't be alone. Okay? Don't be alone. It's a good or bad story. Good. Tell you another story. It's a good or bad story. Some women are bad. Okay, it's a bad story. I will tell you a good story too. So, okay, let's to, uh, see our unit today. It's uh, what's the first lesson in our unit? Do you remember? Conversation time. Conversation time. Okay. I will ask you some uh, one question. Do you have your breakfast today? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Huh? Yes, you? Yes. All of us must take our breakfast all days. Okay. Please lock your box around the box. Look at these pictures. We have Mona and her friend Huda. Our two friends, they are at the campsite. Now we will see what Huda do with her friend Mona. What do you expect she will do with her? From the picture. Summer is Huda. Okay, listen to them. Wake up, Mona. What time is it? It is 7 o'clock. It is time for breakfast. Good. I'm hungry. 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 I'm hungry
a workbook and a student book in one book. Okay? So it might be better for you just to, when you try to finish each unit, try to, to use each lesson with the workbook. I mean that if you finish conversation time, go to the workbook and finish the conversation time task. Why we do that? Because it's very easy for the students to remember the whole strategies, the whole words, the whole function, the whole structures that they have taken in conversation time. Don't delay it for a long time because maybe they forget and they will ask you what we shall do here, what we have uh, with uh, this task, what we have to do here. So they maybe forget. So I would like you to try to connect between the lesson and maybe the next period or the same period for the activity task. Okay? So it might be, and we ask them to just make it in the same area, conversation time and the next stage the task. But they didn't listen to us. Okay? So it might be good for you. Don't delay it for a long time. If you if you don't have enough time. You can finish unit by unit. Unit for the student book and unit for the workbook. It might be good. Okay? So, the objectives of today, we would like to focus on how to identify the three steps of reading activity and the goals of each, understand the rationale behind teaching and narratives, apply the steps for presenting a reading lesson, encourage students to use techniques that make them more efficient and effective. Before we start talking about this, before you ask your students to read and write, you have to be a good writer and a good reader. This is something that is very important. If you try to write any word on the board, Try to make sure that the handwriting of yourself is neat, is good. How to teach reading and how to teach writing. Reading steps. The same as we have taken about the listening skills we have a pre and during and post. Reading, pre-reading, during and post reading. We have many texts. For example, in primary six, we have Rami forgot. We have something about ice cream in primary six, I think. And we have something about Grandma Ali's restaurant. All these are reading texts. So how can we teach this kind of text? Just ask them to read. I think it's very important to recognize the new vocabulary. First. Because without knowing the vocabulary, it's very hard for you, as a teacher, not for a student, to recognize the meaning of the whole text. So first of all, you have to introduce the new vocabulary. We use this vocabulary not for memorizing, but for using them to give me the meaning of the text. But in the exam, we don't care about the exam. Don't tell me about the exam that they are having the word time, only the word time, or the conversation time, vocabulary only. We don't care about this. I care about how to teach the reading text. So they have to know all the words in the text, just to make it easy for them to understand the text. For example, uh, in another text about the banda, in the primary six too. So you have to remember all these words and give them the meaning to read. يعني أنا بقول بستخدم مضارع تام عند حدوث حدث وانتهى منذ قليل مثلا. إحنا بنعمل إيه كده؟ نروح جايبين في الجملة كلمة تدل على الباست عشان العيل إيه؟ يريح دماغه. نقول له شفت كلمة أجو، شفت كلمة لاست مش عارف إيه، 
لاست ماندي لاست يبقى ايه بيها ماضي بسيط لا شفت كلمه سنس ده يعني بصراحه يعني ايه طريقه لا لا هي تعليم لغه ولا تعليم اي حاجه بالظبط فاحنا القصه هنبدا ازاي اذا جيت الاولاد اللي عندك بيفهموا من خلال المفهوم So there is a difference between the two topics. So our mission for today is how to learn how to teach. How to learn how to teach English. Because it's not easy for anyone to teach English as we think. So we have to follow a lot of strategies, a lot of methods, a lot of ways. And all these methods are educational. They are not invented from our minds. They are written in a book. So today we are going to talk about how to apply different methods inside the classroom. Remember, English is not your first language. Sometimes you mispronounce a lot of words. So your job is to get started with your English first. Before you start teaching English, you have to be aware of the proper pronunciations of each single word you are going to teach inside the classroom. Don't depend totally on your way of how to say the words. Not all the words, the same spelling, the same pronunciation. So you have to check that in your dictionary if you know how to use the, your dictionary. But if you don't have a dictionary or if you don't know how to use the dictionary, you have to ask someone who is specialized in English. And this is not a problem. All of us learning from each other. So asking someone is a good way. Don't give anyone in your class something is wrong. Because he is going to memorize these things forever. And the problem will be last forever. Okay? So please, before you start giving anything for the students, especially the pronunciation of the words, you have to be correct about each single word. Okay? So let's uh, go on. The objectives of the whole program for the three days. What do you expect as you told me now? The first objective is, first, by the end of the three days, participants, I mean you, the trainees, you will be able to do the whole thing as you see on the board. The first thing is, by the end of the workshop, you have to be know how to Recognize the importance of lesson planning. Lesson planning, how to organize your lesson plan. Because if you get into your classroom without any organization for your lesson plan, at the end of the period, you will do nothing. So the outcome will be nothing because you are not following certain rules in your lesson plan. So today we will learn how to make a good lesson plan to follow it inside the classroom during the time of the period. Okay? This is the first objective. The second objective is how to identify the steps of planning a lesson. How to plan a lesson if something is written. So before we start, we have objectives. We have the teaching aids, for example. We have the time management, how to manage your time inside your classroom, how to, to use the teaching aids effectively. Because some people use the teaching aids in, in a proper way. And this is very hard for the students to learn. So how to use the lesson plan according to certain steps. The third one is how to apply the steps of teaching the different language. How to integrate the four skills, listening, speaking, reading, writing. Because if you focus on all the four skills inside your classroom, so you are teaching English. 
Some teachers neglect listening or speaking, and this is very hard. But if you just focus on how to write and how to read only, you are not teaching a communicative language. You are teaching something to pass the exam. And this is our problem. So the four skills should be integrated together during your presentation, during your show inside the classroom. So how can I do this? This is what we are going to learn. Then how to use songs and the stories to create fun in the class. Learning any language is a fun. So if you make your lesson as something is funny, you are going to teach English. But if you just make them as rules, you are not teaching anything. So fun by using songs, stories, jokes, repetition for anything, puzzles, quizzes, inside the classroom is going to add more entertainment, more fun to your students. So how to teach songs? We have many different procedures. We have steps. We have different steps how to teach songs. So if you look at time for English syllables, you can see a lot of songs are included in the units. Why? Because teaching the songs, you are making just a review for vocabulary, for grammar, for uh, whatever you would like to teach. So songs help us or help the teacher and help the students to learn more about the language. But if you just give your students just a few words on the board and you ask them to repeat them, so what is the outcome? Easy come, easy go. But if you included them in a song, they are going to sing it outside the classroom. And they can memorize it. And the memory will be for long term, not for short term. Okay? So this is why we are using songs and songs. Would you like to say something? Yes, it makes something is life. It's not something written only in the books. So they can sing the song, use the words, use the expressions. You know. Okay, the other one is how to reflect on the performance of the different classroom practices. When you finish, when you are doing your activities, then you would like to see if they can get something beneficial from this lesson or not. So the reflection or the feedback from the students is very, very crucial, very, very important how to see that everything is going on or not. So how can we judge on that? By reflection about my teaching from the practices of the students themselves. At the end, for example, you ask them to make a dialogue. If they succeeded in making a dialogue without using the books, so you are in a good position. So you get it. But if they don't know how to use it, so what is the use of using dialogues and conversation time and phonics time? So practice by the turn of the students is very important. Have you got it? So these all the topics or the overall objectives we are going to focus and through the light on them. start with the listen learning. The first thing we are going to talk about how to prepare your teacher's notes. You know, your teacher's notes. This is what I mean by listen planning. Do you think listen planning is very important? Is it okay for you just to get inside the classroom without any preparation and you can do it? I don't think you can do it. It's very hard because you cannot remember everything. But if you have a good listen plan, you can steal some signs. You can look at your regulations and you can go on. Because we don't have a lot of things to keep in our mind. So listen planning is very important. Why? By looking here, by the end of the first day, participants will be able to do what? 
Listen planning is very important. Why? This is what we will talk about. How to identify the steps of the listen planning? Apply the steps of teaching listening and songs. How to teach listening and songs. Apply the steps of teaching reading and stories. Okay, look at this saying. It's very important to think about this saying. This saying is, says what? If you don't know where you are going, if you don't know where you are going, you are going wrong. So if you just talk for talking, you are going to get nothing. If you keep walking for nothing, you will get nothing. So this is a plan is something like a guide for you, like a line at the end of the distance. You have to walk to that line to get it. So listen the plan is a step. Just many steps. You have to step them just to reach your destination. Okay? So listen the plan is something is very important. So if you know what you are going to do inside your classroom, so you are a successful teacher. But if you don't know how to teach your lessons inside the classroom and just depend on your experience, I don't think you can get it. So the most important thing is to get a lesson plan. We follow the lesson plan. It's okay. But if I feel that the students can learn more from different things, rather than the lesson plan. It's okay, no problem. What I care about is the outcome. Do I, do I try to apply the whole objectives? Can I implement all the objectives in my classroom? This is the question you have to ask yourself before you start following the steps. So many teachers say it's very hard to follow all the steps in the teacher's guide. I say it's okay, no problem. If you have any other way to do it, do it. What I care about is the outcome at the end of the lesson. I don't care about the method you are using or the way you are following. What I care about is the outcome. But if you don't know how to teach English, I advise you, I recommend you just to make a lesson plan. So if you want to know where you are going well, you have to keep something in your hand, just like the lesson plan. Okay? Do you agree with me? Do you agree? I'm You agree. بس لو ينفع لو الشريحة اللي قبل اللي كانت التخطيط بتاع الحصة نفسها يا ريت يعني نعرضه عشان هي هي ما جاتش هي ما كانتش موجودة ودي حاجة مهمة أو أساسية الشريحة دي اه اه يعني مختصر بس صغير خالص لو ينفع احنا كنا اتكلمنا لو سمحت انا معيدة عشانك على فكرة by the end of the first day, participants, when I mean you, the trainees, will be able to do one, to recognize the importance of this planning. planning. Okay? Listen planning is very important. By the end of the day, you will be aware how to make a listen plan, how to make your plans in the teacher's notes, okay? How to follow them inside the classroom. The second point is how to identify the steps of planning a lesson. What are the different steps should be included in the lesson plan? Okay, for example, objectives, the teaching aids, the songs, the motivations, the home fun, and so on. And the next point is how to apply the steps of teaching listening and songs. How to teach listening. Because listening is one of the most important skills in communication language. If you don't know how to teach listening, so you are not going to be able to listen good. Okay? So how to teach songs, how to teach stories, this is very important. 
and then apply the steps of teaching, reading, and writing. For example, okay. So in, in this point, we are going to cover the four skills: listening, speaking, reading, and writing. writing. Okay. These are the different steps or the different objectives we are going to cover for today. Okay. As you see. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Something is very precious to say about this. Yes, if you are not planned well, your performance will be very poor. So if you would like to make your performance very rich and useful and fruitful, you have to make your proper planning. Robert, planning, anything in our world, in our personal life, if you don't plan well for your future, I think you will get nothing at the end of your life. So planning is very important. So if you would like to make your performance, your demonstration, your show inside the classroom very rich and very proper, you have to make a good plan. Okay, so this is why listen planning is very, very important. Okay? Why plan? Why do we plan for our businesses? Why? This is the question. Okay?